Hey there Aquarius, welcome to Divine Conversations and welcome to your general energy reading. This could be for your month of September, but also keep in mind that this is a timeless reading. This doesn't have to resonate for you for September, but whenever you're guided to watch this reading and it resonates, then that's the message for you at that time. Um, also keep in mind that this is a general reading. Yes, so this is not necessarily going to resonate for everyone. So please take it as it resonates and leave what doesn't or take what resonates and leave what doesn't. Uh, we also could be speaking directly to a cross watcher. So um, if you are cross watching for an Aquarian energy and this still resonates, then just take it. Yeah, place it in your life as it fits. Um, uh, please make sure to like, share, comment and subscribe if you feel so inclined and haven't done so already. If you would like to get a personal reading with me, I am available for that. Check the information in the description box below where I list the readings that I offer and my email address. Shoot me an email letting me know you're interested and I'll be more than happy to get you all hooked up. Uh, we could be talking about the astrology for the month if that does come into your reading. Um, but keep in mind that when I speak of astrology, I speak of it from the true sidereal system. Now, with that said, Aquarius, you don't have to resonate with or be familiar with the true sidereal system to resonate with this reading. If you resonate with Aquarius energy, then this you very well could resonate with this reading. Okay? Excellent. Um, that's enough. Let's get into this, Aquarius. Um, I'm seeing yellow energy for you, and I'm hearing direction-oriented or action oriented um i just feel very i feel like you're very enthusiastic at, 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 uh, blah, blah, blah. you're very enthusiastic right now you're feeling gung-ho you're feeling driven um this feels quite aryan this feels like aries energy maybe you have an aries placement um i will say that mars is mars is the ruling planet of aries and Mars is, in terms of true sidereal astrology, Mars is transiting through Taurus right now. Action-oriented, this could be your sense of drive. I wonder, I wonder, maybe you have an activation in um, your chart in the constellation of Aries. I do know that Uranus right now is still in the constellation of Aries. Again, true sidereal astrology. If you are an Aquarius rising, oh boy, hold on. I got to think about this for a second. Aquarius rising would put Aries in your third house. Yeah. So um, if that's, of course, for an Aquarius rising. So if you are... Maybe you could have an activation going on here in your third house. Um, also, with Mercury retrograde here this month, that, be could, that could be driving you to learn something new. Mercury rules Gemini. Gemini, uh, also Mercury rules the third house and the sixth house. But um, yeah, you could have, okay. Either way, it doesn't really matter. I'm kind of, I'm getting off track and I'm losing, I'm losing the, the, <laughs> the channel here. Uh, but check all these things. Some of these things may be activated for you at this time, or you could just feel driven towards something. I mean, you don't have to have some sort of Aries activation for you to be driven. <laughs> okay. You have uh, card number 14, beautiful uncaging. Card number 49, willing release. And then card number 42, smoke and mirrors. Um, what I'm hearing for you, Aquarius, is you are feeling really driven to eradicate, to release this smoke and mirrors. What has been, I, I get this feeling, Aquarius, that you're in a time period right now where you are really not trying to take no shit from nobody. Anybody that may have been deceiving you, uh, blocking you or hindering your progress, talking down to you, acting shady towards you, whatnot, whatever, you are just not trying to have that around you. With this beautiful uncaging energy here, take all of these, oh goodness, all right. With this, <laughs> sorry guys, with this beautiful uncaging energy here, I feel like you recently found something out. You recently came to an understanding of something. You may have even recently emerged from some sort of hermit mode energy. Or, 
you are finally ready to let some truth about you reign supreme and be free. You're willing to let go with this also willing release here. You're willing to let go of the chains or the confines that have been holding you back, have been keeping you down. I'm also hearing have been leading you astray. Okay, any sort of smoke and mirrors energy or anyone that is trying to project this energy towards you really had better watch out because I really feel a strong drive within you. Very Mars energy, okay? Again, in true sidereal astrology, Mars is transiting through Taurus right now and that would put Taurus in your, wow, uh, around your fourth, fifth house. So, um, if this is, if Mars is transiting or making some sort of aspect within your fifth house right now, that really could be what this beautiful uncaging would be representative of, uh, because traditionally the fifth house is ruled by Leo. And we did have a new moon on August 27th of 2020, August 27th. 25th, 20, something like that. It was a Saturday. And that was in the constellation, again, true sidereal astrology, but that was in the constellation of Leo. And at that time, I felt like Aquarius, <clears throat> that was like an activation moment where, um, especially with the fact that Venus is in the constellation, a constellation of Leo right now, true sidereal astrology, um, Venus is bringing with that a level of desiring to love and nurture yourself better or desiring to express yourself in ways or that new moon may have given you a clarity, the clarity and or peace of mind to understand how you may not have been honoring yourself properly, giving you a new, re a renewed sense of pride, pride, er pride, ego, arrogance. Okay, I am hearing that, but, uh, but I feel like this is a intrinsically or naturally from a good place. I feel like there's this very strong desire to treat yourself better, to express yourself more authentically, to throw away the shackles that have kept you from expressing yourself authentically. And then following that, we had the full moon, which was in the constellation of Aquarius, a little bit of Pisces too, but your constellation there. And I was picking up on, for the collective, I was picking up on the, uh, your, your friends, your, your social circle, maybe in full focus for you during that time because Aquarius, you do rule the 11th house and that is your social circle, your friends group, your wishes and your dreams. That could have given you a greater access towards or greater power towards seeing your dreams through that full moon, which was September 9th, the day that Mercury went retrograde or started his, officially started his retrograde motion, started going retro, started stationing retrograde. <sighs> Mercury retrograde could also be an aspect here. In terms of true sidereal astrology, Mercury is retrograde in the constellation of Virgo. Mercury is exalted in Virgo. This really could be a lot of where your drive towards fixing your situation, handling the situation, clearing out the smoke and mirrors, uncaging yourself. This really could be where this energy, this drive, this push for all of this is coming from. You have a whole stack of cards here. Manifest. Synchronicity. Duality. Awareness. Playfulness, subtle energy, shadow, and finally, unity. Okay, <clears throat> let's start here. You're definitely in a place of manifestation, of desiring to manifest something new, of desiring to really follow through with something or build something here, manifest. Okay, synchronicity has probably put you on to duality in your life. Tricksters, I just heard. People that have been shady towards you. 
people who have not been telling you the full truth, who have not been honest with you, who have been talking out of both sides of their mouth, who have been showing up one way towards you, but then being completely different behind your back. Also though, duality doesn't necessarily have to be a bad thing, although I did hear tricksters with that. Because we do live in an intrinsically dualistic world. Case in point, we have two genders, man and woman, okay? That's an expression of duality. But I really did hear tricksters for you. Which is appropriate since we have that smoke and mirrors card. And Mercury sometimes is seen as the trickster. And Mercury retrograde could be a time period of tricksters running amok. But... Mercury retrograde could also be putting you on to that awareness. <clears throat> you're being come aware of, or you're being provided with an opportunity, or you have become aware, or you have been provided with an opportunity to see where the trickster energy lies in your life. 11-11 on the counter. To see where the trickster energy has been uh, has been in your life to see where the duality the dualistic to become aware of the, the, the dualistic nature of people maybe certain people in your life mm. next you have playfulness okay but then you have subtle energy and shadow hold on sorry i had to pause for a second um Okay, see, now here's the thing. Here's the duality of the situation. I feel like there may have been some people around you that have been super playful. But that's been a front. Because, because there was a, there's a very subtle energy here of shadow. And your awareness is coming towards that or you are becoming aware of that. You are allowed to see past this seemingly playful front that someone or some people may have been putting up in front of you to, to make you think they're on your side, to make you think that, oh, it's all good, it's all love here, blah, 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 you know, to throw you off the scent of what's really going on underneath the surface in the shadows. And then finally, you have unity. Finally, you have unity. I do feel like you are working on finding you and unity within the duality. I mean, we are here in this three dimensional world of intrinsic duality. So you're not ever going to be away from it until you know you pass from this world or you move on back to the spirit realms but i feel like you are working on maybe this is where the drive is coming from this is where the action orientation is coming from for you aquarius you are driven to bring a level of balance and or unity into your life to unify what has been dualistic for you to find a sense of unity within the duality and that takes you willfully releasing something and and eradicating this smoke and mirrors these smoke and mirrors types energies okay aquarius i like that for you One last shuffle. And let's get into some tarot here for you. Yes? Okay. What's going on for Aquarius? First card you have is the Fool. I want to say Mars energy. I want to say Aries energy. But I think the Fool actually represents Pisces energy. I don't remember. But I want to say Aries energy here. You might have an Aries placement.
judgment. The devil. And the Queen of Swords. Overall energy. The Lovers. Yo, Aquarius. Do you see all of this major arcana? You have four cards here that I felt I wanted to pull. When I normally pull three, but I felt like in this situation, I was like, nope, we need four cards for Aquarius. Okay. Technically, you have five with this overall energy at the bottom of the deck. So four out of the five cards you have here describing your situation are major arcana. This is big. This is very big for you. This is a major life change, potentially. The lovers represents this choice, also Gemini energy. But with the Gemini energy, I'm getting um, communication, friendship. This is third house energy. There may be, what didn't I say? Hold on. If you're an Aquarius rising, Mercury retrograde is potentially most likely moving through your third house. You hear that rooster? Judgment. Wake up call. Wake up call. Okay. You are desiring to take a leap of faith. You are desiring to start a new cycle. You are desiring to go in a new direction. The fool. In order to do that, Aquarius, there is going to have to be a judgment call made about the devilish and or toxic, low vibrational, smoke and mirrors, dualistic, two-faced people or energies or circumstances in your life. And from there, you know what you have to do, Queen of Swords. Cut that shit out. There's no space for it here. There is no space for you and your toxic, low vibrational energy in my life at this time because that's not what I want to deal with. Or I'm done with that. I am moving on from that. I am taking a leap of faith away from this type of situation and or circumstance. And you are determined to do it. <laughs> Fuck yeah, Aquarius. Let's get some clarity. Now also, I, I wanna say, I, wanna, I just wanna, I really wanna drive this home, Aquarius, this lover's energy here is a choice of your highest good, what's best for you. And it really feels like you are driven to cut out any sort of situations or circumstances that hold you back. Okay, I wanted to see if there was anything else I wanted to say there, but no, they're saying just get clarifying. Okay, uh, let's clarify the fool first, please. What's the fool for Aquarius? Here you are. The king of swords. It's objective. Point blank period. I mean, you have both the king and the queen here, Aquarius. All right. But the king is showing up. Now, the king is way more objective and balanced uh, than the queen. Most of the time. The king of swords is all about objective thinking and objective point of view. Okay? He weighs the options. He looks at the evidence. He gets all the evidence that he can for and against a certain argument. And then he weighs them. And he makes a judgment call. Now, this is... In terms of you taking your leap of faith here, Aquarius, it is completely 100% pure, unadulterated objectivity. It is what it is. If we want to go here, then we got to do this. And we've got to leave this behind. This is not coming from a place of spite. This is not coming from a place of 
emotional situations. And you, Aquarius, get a bad reputation all the time for being emotionally disconnected from a situation. But naturally, Aquarius, you have to be because your energy is all about finding balance and harmony for the greater good of all, right? In order for you to do that, you have to be emotionally detached. So that's what you're expressing here. A level of emotional detachment. It is what it is. Let's be real with each other. The evidence shows X, Y, and Z. So we've got to follow through with A, B, and C. Clarify the fool, please. There's more major arcana, the chariot, okay? This is, see now this is where the emotions come into play, all right? Because in order to move forward with the chariot here, you have to have that, that balance of positive and negative. Oftentimes this represents the emotions. The chariot does represent uh, Cancerian energy. Cancer is a water sign, so there's natural emotion right there. But it's about balancing those emotions understanding what is right and what is wrong for you, what feels good and what feels doesn't, while also understanding where it is you want to be going, the direction that you want to and or need to be going in, and then making an objective decision about it. Okay? Point blank period. The ch uh, a fool? Anything else for the fool for Aquarius? This is really, that now, the, no, no, that's all that's coming out here. Okay, and what I'm getting next is this chariot energy here represents this beautiful uncaging for yourself. You have a vision in mind, I'm hearing. You have a direction that you want to go in. And for some of you here, you're just now allowing yourself to get into alignment with that. Or at least, this is the time for you to do it. You're ready now. You're ready to go in this direction. You're ready to follow through with this calling from your higher self, from this pull. You're ready to start this new journey and take this leap of faith. Overall energy here is the 10 of pentacles. Completion of a life process, but also I feel like you have a goal in mind, a long-term goal in your mind. And you're, and you're getting ready to set off on that. Okay. Let's look at judgment then next. Clarify judgment for Aquarius, please. First card is the Queen of Pentacles. Self-respect, reciprocity, nurturance. Capricorn energy. We do have Capricorn twice here now with the Devil and the Queen of Pentacles. Um... But this Queen of Pentacles energy, Aquarius, is giving me a feeling of being committed to giving birth to something or nurturing something to life and taking the appropriate steps and appropriate actions to do that. Clarify judgment. Death is next. I really feel like this is a the, the big one of the central messages here Aquarius you are showing up again. <laughs> but one of the big central themes of this energy for you Aquarius is in fact having gone through a transformation in terms of your sense of self-respect and what it is you know you are meant to receive, what it is you know you are capable of receiving. Knowing what it is that you bring to, ta to the table and not allowing yourself to, re re to receive anything less than that. Holding that boundary. You have the star. There you are showing up again. And the seven of wands. You know what it is you are meant to receive. I just heard you know what it is you wish to receive. I feel like Aquarius, you recently came into this level of self-respect and honoring your self-worth. And because of that, now a judgment call is being made. This here, the Queen of Pentacles to death, to the start of the Seven of Wands, 
represents this process that you went through of understanding a greater sense or getting connected or grounded to, connected to, I want to say, a greater sense of self-worth and what it is you dream of and a healing aspect because this, this, the star represents Aquarius but also represents healing and the transformation that you went through and now the boundaries that are being placed, that are being kept because you've gone through this transformation and now this judgment call is being made on this smoke and mirrors, on this subtle energy, on this shadow energy, on this duality even. The Queen of Pentacles is the first, will be the first to tell you, you can't have it both ways. You can't be my friend and then stab me in the back. You can't stab me in the back and expect me to still respect you, expect me to still be your friend. It doesn't work that way. Overall energy at the bottom of the deck is, deck is a page of cups. With that, I'm hearing self-love. Apologies are needed. Apologies are necessary. Okay, but that doesn't change the fact that I can't trust you. The devil. Clarify the devil for Aquarius, please. Ten of Pentacles. So this is a long-term situation. This is, a, um, this is the ending of a life cycle. Yeah, the Knight of Pentacles reversed. Whoa. That's why this, this long-standing situation, long-term life cycle thing, that's why it's coming to an end. Because you are no longer giving to this situation. You are no longer following through with this. You are no longer pursuing it. You are, nope. Oh no, there is definitely a sense of loyalty here. Makes sense, you're a fixed sign. Fixed signs are loyal. Or at least have loyal tendencies. Ten of Pentacles, Knight of Pentacles reversed, Six of Pentacles. Ten of Pentacles. Ten of Pentacles, Knight of Pentacles reversed, and the Six of Pentacles. This is all about reciprocity. This is all about you figuring out that you were worthy of more. This is you demanding respect from your level of self-respect that you have come to an understanding of. And then finally, you have the Queen of Swords here. The decision has been made. I'm sorry, I'm sorry. Ultimately though, at the bottom of the deck, you do have the Knight of Swords here. Fighting back against this. Doing what it is you need to do to clear out this smoke and mirrors. And then you have the Queen of Swords here. Clarify the Queen of Swords. And I, with that, I hear the decision has been made. I don't know what you think you're trying to convince me of now. <laughs> the decision has been made. I don't know what you're trying to convince me of now, but I am solid. Four of Wands. I am moving forward. Knight of Wands on this new journey. I am breaking new ground here, Page of Pentacles. It is what it is. Don't, tr don't try and come back and holler at me now. Now that I've cut your ass free. Shit. Must be out your mind. I don't know what you're talking about. I'm moving forward. I'm heading this way. So go on, get your things, pack your things, whatever. Oh, I got this, that, and the third. That's cool. I'll return it to you. I don't even want it. I don't want that energy. You know what? I, I, I ain't even going to say all that. I'll, you want your shit back? Trust. Bet. I got you. But I'm going this way, and you are not coming with me. End of the story. End of discussion, <laughs> says the Queen of Swords. Because I'm solid. I'm good. I don't need your validation anymore. That says that Four of Wands. Overall energy... Yeah, is the five, God bless, is the five of cups, but then the deck split open to the moon.
smoke and mirrors. Now this person or these people want to feign regret and loss and shame and guilt. Now they want to do that? It's an act. Don't let it bother you. It's just another expression of that smoke and mirrors, okay? Mm -mm -mm. Now you may be mourning this loss too, don't get me wrong. You may be feeling some of this Five of Cups energy as well. But it is what it is. And what I just heard is it is what it has always been. It has always been like this. It's not going to change now. And you know that. And that's why I feel like you are so driven, Aquarius, to move on. Because you've had enough. You're done. You've learned the lesson. You've completed this process. It doesn't even have to be this whole like animosity type thing. Let me read you. Let me read you the riot act. Let me tell you about yourself. No, it doesn't even have to be like that. But what it does have to be is you moving forward from this point. And that's where I feel this drive is coming from for you. Okay. And I support you on that. I more power to you, babe. Honestly, good for you. This is excellent. This is epic even. <laughs> Closing message. Okay. Lightworker Oracle deck. Lightworker Oracle. Oh, closing message. Yes. For Aquarius. For Aquarius. Card number 21, spiritual service. <clears throat> Self-doubt can be a habit that is hard to break. It can slow down your spiritual progress and the fulfillment of your life purpose. Ultimately, it won't stop you but it can make your progress seem more challenging. It's easier to fulfill your purpose when you acknowledge your own goodness and talent and do what you love to the best of your ability. Release or realize that you are enough, that your work is good and that you have something of value to offer. It is time to let go of fear of failure concerning or concern about your ability and your right to live a happy and fulfilled life of success. The universe believes in you. Excellent. Okay. I'm going to leave it there. Thank you guys so much for tuning in. I hope this was helpful for you. I'm sending you so much love. If you would like to get a personal reading with me, I am available for that. Check the information in the description box below where I list the readings that I offer and my email address. Shoot me an email letting me know you are interested and I will be more than happy to get you all hooked up. And please make sure to like, share, comment, and subscribe if you feel so inclined and haven't done so already. And if you would like to support the channel and the work that I do here on the channel, then check out Patreon, patreon.com slash divine conversations. The link to that can be found in the description box below. But with that said, Aquarius, I love you so much. I hope you have a fantastic day. And I look forward to connecting with you again for our next reading very, very soon. Yes? Excellent. Bye.